it's going to be a hit. This is the first release. I'd love to hear it. I can't tell you what this music has meant to me. This video will analyse the closing sequence in Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window. This mimics the opening or establishing sequence, so I implore everyone to re-watch that scene beforehand so you can pick up on any connections. This sequence begins just as at the start, with a close-up of the thermometer. Here, we can see that the heatwave has ceased, and it is now a pleasant 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 21 degrees Celsius for those of you playing at home, compared to the 90 degrees which is seen earlier on in the film, and that's about 33 degrees Celsius. The significant drop in temperature symbolizes the decreasing tensions in the film. Now this is not just between the neighbors themselves and in the neighborhood, but also the decrease in tension between our two protagonists, Jeff and Lisa. The camera then pans to the songwriter's apartment, where we see that he has been joined by Miss Lonely Hearts. After hearing his music during her suicide attempt, she has been assertive in approaching him and is now in his apartment listening to the first release of the song which saved her. She states, I can't tell you what this music has meant to me, which betrays the songwriter as I guess a kind of saviour, rescuing the damsel in distress. Yet, if we look a little bit closer, we can see that the window frames were employed to segment the two characters, highlighting a clear distance between them. This technique was used earlier in the film to isolate the songwriter from his party guests. This showcases the physical and emotional distance between the two, and I guess emphasizes the idea that the two characters will need to work together in order to strengthen their relationship. Subsequently, the camera pans to Thorwald's apartment, where workers are painting the walls. This perhaps suggests that they are covering up the past and starting afresh. But it's also interesting to note that both the living room and the bedroom are being painted the same colour. Previously, the living room, where Lars Thorwald spent the majority of the time, was a different colour to the bedroom, where Anna spent most of hers. The difference in colour, I guess, displayed their separation from one another and isolation and lack of connection that they shared. Now, following this, the camera tilts up to see the couple who own the dog, and while the male is inside, the female is teaching the new dog how to climb into the basket in order to reach the courtyard. This elucidates that the couple have learned to trust the community again, and the neighbours, of course, too, and we saw that with her vitriol and anger as she shouted at her neighbours earlier on in the film that they didn't know the, the meaning of the word neighbour. The audience is then taken to Miss Torso's apartment, where, to our surprise, she welcomes back her partner from the army. Based on Geoffrey's assumption, Miss Torso is depicted as being charming, flirtatious, vivacious, and while entertaining three men, Geoffrey's pointed out that she was picking the most prosperous one. Her joy in being reunited with Stanley, who is quite short and albeit quite plain, is evident 
She's really happy. Yet, what is interesting is his response. He states, The army's made me hungry. What have you got in the icebox to eat? Suggesting that he is more interested in food than his girlfriend. Tilting down, we see Miss Hearing Aid sleeping peacefully in the yard, and this is clearly different to her shock when she was rebuked by Lars Thorwald at the beginning of the film. She's now much more relaxed and happy in the courtyard. The newlyweds are shown next, where there is far more tension and arguing than previously, stating, If you had told me you'd quit your job, we wouldn't have gotten married. The initial bliss following the wedding has washed away, and the reality of married life has emerged. Their bickering mimics that of Jeff and Lisa earlier in the film when they clash over the contradictory views on their careers, their relationships, and both their futures. To close, the audience are then taken back into Jeffrey's apartment, where he is resting peacefully with his back to the neighbourhood. This highlights that he has turned his back on voyeurism and is solely consumed with the events within his own apartment, namely Lisa. The close-up of his legs underline that both legs are now broken, and yes, that shows that Jeffries does not have a leg to stand on. Our final shot is that of Lisa. The camera pans up her body and we see her wearing more informal clothing, jeans and a red casual shirt. She's reading beyond the high Himalayas, showcasing the interest she is showing in Jeffrey's world and the steps she's willing to take in order to compromise with her boyfriend. Lisa is now watching Jeff, with the position of power shifting to her, and after checking he is asleep, she's quick to pull out a Harper's Bazaar magazine. Now you can analyse this in two ways. One could be the lengths that Lisa, and by extension women in the 1950s, have to go to in order to hide aspects of their life from men. The other way to look at it is that Lisa is wearing the pants, she is being assertive, and that she is able to balance all aspects of her life, both her successful career and a promising relationship. It's important to note too the soundtrack that plays. It's called Lisa. The film closes with the blinds being closed and the show and the voyeurism is officially over. <laughs>